Hello, happy Tuesday! And it's been a while, so forgive me. It's been a minute since I did the last live video. As we move into October, November, December, it is the craziest time of the year for us retailers, so it has been a little crazy here. But today I want to talk about uh, this topic that I think a lot of people have a lot of misunderstanding about. So we're going to talk about pre arrival wines. Pre-arrival has become a more popular way for a lot of the retailers selling wine nowadays, and let's just get to it. So first thing first, the first point I want to touch on is I actually believe that pre-arrival really was kind of an extension of what the Bordeaux used to, not use, they're still doing what we call the en premier. So in Bordeaux, every April, they invite all the major wine distributor, buyer, retailers from around the world, and you go into this whole week of en premier, oh. running from one winery to the next, tasting all their bar barrel samples from the harvest of the year before, super young. And based on that, the big buyers, the big retailer, they have an idea of the quality of that particular vintage and how much they want to buy from specific winery. So why was that important back in the days? Well, for Bordeaux, you have to age them in oak and bottle and all that stuff for quite a long time. Sometimes they're in oak for two years and then have to do another bottle for uh, uh, 30 more, uh, no, sorry, six more months. And by the time it's all said and done, you're looking at just three years later before you get money for the wine that you harvested this year. So Un Premier really helped with the cash flow problem and you know how much wine you can sell up from. But the funny thing is some of the bigger Bordeaux houses nowadays, because they, the money is no longer the issue, so they are not really into the Premier anymore because Premier is usually the cheapest you will be able to find a new release Bordeaux vintage because as the Bordeaux um, ages more and as the more credits talk about the certain year, if it's a good year, the wine price just continue to go up. Hence why Un Premier is really attractive. But like I said, some of the bigger Bordeaux house, most famously known is the Chateau Latour, no longer participate in the Un Premier. They will only release wine when they deem that it's ready from their seller, which is very smart of them to do because they can release the wine when it's the optimum time, when it's the most expensive and um, and they, they have full control instead of selling it for very thin margin in the beginning. Whereas pre-arrival wine just means that it is wine that is not yet here in stock and it will be in stock sometime in the future. But there is again a lot of confusion and misunderstanding I think from a lot of the my clients. So let's talk about this. So I want to talk about I think why so point number two why did the last economic crash in the United States made this whole pre-arrival very trendy amongst the wine uh, retailer? So back in 2008, the housing bubble burst and it was a very interesting time because it was also the same time where China really started getting into buying heavily in Bordeaux and a lot of the French wine, especially the Bordeaux. They actually drove up the price so much from 2005 all the way to 2008, 2009, 2010. And it was almost um, like the price was almost too high for a lot of the American buyer. And then at the same time, the United States housing bubble burst and we went into a huge recession in 08. What happened there is prior to that, the way those wines comes into the United States is through an exporter and or an importer and, or um, they sell it to the local distributor, some of the big guys like Youngs and Seldons, and those distributors then sell it to retailers like me and me, I sell it to you. So as you can tell, there's a lot of middlemen, right? So uh, importer or exporter, either from Bordeaux or here, there, and then the distributor, and then me, and then you. So multiple markup. Um, but because of the e economy crash, the consumer were not able to buy wine, hence they're not ordering from me, from me, the retailer. So if they're not ordering from me, I'm not buying from the distributor, all those really expensive Bordeaux. So then what happened was some of those big importer that was buying a ton of Bordeaux and they have a lot of wines in stock went out of business actually. A lot of importer just tank back in 2008 and 2009. But here's the thing, when there's hard time, people always find a way to cope and find a way to do business differently. Hence why the, a lot, uh, some of the importer that survived, instead of going, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy all this wine and bring it to the United States and hoping it will sell, they got smarter. What they ended up doing is they reach out to retailer like myself going, hey, 
I, I still have the importing license. I still have the logistic. I can bring the wine for you, but I'm not going to bring it in until I have a commitment from you. So how much wine do you want before I bring it in, which makes a lot of sense. So I hate to say it, a lot of the uh, big importer in the OA, once they went out of business, they changed the business model from being, being an importer, even though it's still an importer, they're really just a logistic business now. They charge the retailer uh, markup to bring the bottle, to bring the new label, to you know all that shipping and stuff and pick up, but they are not taking that major markup like they used to as a legit importer. So. That brings me to number three, why should you buy pre-arrival? That's exactly why. Um, because now that some of those importers are working more as a transportation company, you, if you're buying from retailer that does pre-arrival, usually means they're buying it directly from France or whatever country that it's coming from, from the source. And you're cutting out one layer, which is a distribution layer here in the United States. So the price are usually a lot more competitive. And that's why it is very attractive to buy pre-arrival, even though you had to wait longer. Now, let's talk about number four, because I notice whenever I sell pre-arrival wine, some of my clients get very uh, nervous. And, and, and or you might have this uneasy feeling because it's like, oh my God, I just pay you for this wine, but I'm not going to see it for six months or sometimes for Bordeaux is a year or two years. And right now with Trump adding a 25% tariff on all French wine under 40, 14% alcohol, some of you who have ordered really expensive Bordeaux from me last year, you're not going to see that wine until either he uh, leaves next year and then we got Biden who takes over the tariff or he stays and you have to wait four more years before someone else comes in and take out the tariff or else you have to pay 25% more for the already really expensive Bordeaux. So anyways, but sorry, going back to point number four, the one merchant who ruined us, all of us. Um, if you're not into the wine news, if you're not a huge collect collector, you might be new to this, but a lot of my friends and clients have personal experience with a wine merchant called Premier Cru. The Premier Cru was a wine store, a wine merchant located in Berkeley, California. They were sued back in 2018, although the scan scandal has happened long before they were sued, that they were offering a lot of pre-arrival and on premiere to their customer at ridiculous price. The price was too good to be true. And they just taking the money and taking the money and taking the money. And the truth of the matter was when the guy, I think his name was John Fox. I can't remember his name. Sorry, don't quote me on that. But he decided he was just going to scan money and live large. He started driving a fancy car, taking girls out and buying really crazy stuff. But he was literally... Um, just he just putting stuff up that he didn't even order. Like I've talked to people who work for the um, the merchant when this this was all going down. He literally had no sources for the wine. He just listing stuff just just to get you money. And I have friends who have lost a couple hundred dollars up to actually one client had about a million dollar worth of wine under Premier Coup that they, he never recovered. It's absolutely crazy. And after that whole stuff went down, I think a lot of clients' trust has been ruined because of Premier Crew, and they become very worried when it comes to having to buy from a wine merchant and handing the money first for pre-arrival, which is kind of a bummer. I do like to say most retailers are not Premier Crew. We are legit and we are buying the wine and this, Again, brings me to the next point. So what do you look for when you're buying from pre-arrival wine? Okay, number one, one of the thing about Premier Cru that was so attractive and so many people fell for it was because their price was unreal. Like if you are looking at, let's just say an 82 Mouton that is averaging $1,500 a, a bottle and this merchant says it has winery di direct quality for only $600 a bottle or $800 a bottle, you need to take a moment and go, it might be just too good to be true, right? It just might be too good to be true. And the Premier Crew was doing a lot of that. So whenever you see prices that's really too good to be true, make sure if it's a, a, um, a retailer you're unfamiliar with, make sure 
you double check, you find someone who lived in business with before. And even then, sometimes it's a little crazy because Premier Group was a legitimate business for a very long time until they started just taking people's money the last two years without buying anyone. But obviously, make sure you do your homework and you trust the merchant you're buying from. Have merchant you already trust and just continue to buy from them if they're offering you that. Now lastly, I do wanted to talk about the way I do pre-arrival. And some of you who may or may not know me, I am a one-woman operation. This is my passion. And I am a bargain hunter too, so I'm always trying to, I pride myself in finding the best pricing if I'm not matching the best price, if not beating them. And in order to do that, especially on the overall wines I absolutely love, the French wines and whatever have you, I have to do pre-arrival. But because I'm not a huge merchant and I don't have a lot of capital or space, I don't keep a ton of inventory. So every time I find a good deal from the winery or the uh, French exporter, I will offer it to you guys. And then depending on how many bottle are being sold or how much interest I see, that's when I place the order back in France. So it is better for me in a sense to keep everything flowing and better for you because I've only looked for bottles that are really below market value and really good quality, right? Uh, but obviously the bad part is that you do have to wait longer and you do have to trust me. And upon time to time, because I am uh, fighting for certain allocations, sometimes I don't get it. Sometimes I get really excited. Um, they offer something from friends. I sell it to you, I offer it to you guys, but by the time I get back to them, because there's a time difference, the wine is gone. So that has happened a couple of times and that is the bad part, unfortunately. You bear with me. Um, the second reason why I think, or the way, the reason why I do this, and I think if you are a collector of old wine, you should, you should consider trying to buy with me on pre-arrival, is the older vintage wine. So the only way really in the United States for the most part to get old vintage wine, older vintage Bordeaux and Burgundy is through private seller, because most distributors here locally in the United States are not holding on a bunch of older vintage library release Burgundy and Bordeaux. So you're buying it from a private seller, First of all, the price can vary very largely, and most importantly, the quality could be very questionable, especially on a 10, 20 year old Bordeaux or Burgundy. You have no idea how many people owned it before. You have no idea how the wine was kept. So I look for a winery release from friends, older vintage Bordeaux and Burgundy whenever I can, and I know those wines are being kept in a winery and sometimes even rebottle the winery on the really older uh, wines to make sure each bottle is in its prime and perfect condition before I uh, send it to you guys. And that is uh, definitely a special treat. So with that being said, because um, there are a lot more pre-arrival coming late, uh, shortly, I just wanted to make sure that I have this explanation for you guys, so don't worry. And I know with COVID, a lot of things got delayed. Wines are usually takes about four months to get here or taking six months, but don't worry. I'm here, I'm in front of you. If I said I bought, I'm buying a wine pre-arrival, I will get it to you. And if not, I, if something happened, which happened a couple of times, I'll always refund the money. So. I hope this helped you understanding the process of pre-arrival just a little bit more and hopefully it will put your mind at ease the next time you are thinking about buying a wine and it says pre-arrival on there. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you again next time. Bye.